This has got the fix-it guide. Today we're dealing with the leaky seal for the circulation pump on the LG dishwasher. So we're going to repair that by putting in a new sump. We're going to take out the uh, lower and upper baskets. We're going to take out these two Phillips head screws that are holding on the lower spray arm. Just got to zip those out and then you can lift the spray arm straight up. It's kind of hard to get to the screws though, they get very little room. Lift the spray arm straight off. I'm going to remove these little screws here that are holding on the filter plate. And there's a whole bunch of them, so you just want to make sure you get them all out before you try to lift up on the plate. And it's important if you haven't already to unplug it or to turn off the breaker. No chance of getting shocked. Remove those remaining screws, and those again are just Phillips head. And then we have to move this, this um, upper spray arm. So we have to undo these clips here. Just use a standard head screwdriver to pry them off. There's a couple of clips at the top too you want to pry off. And you twist this to the left and then it'll just come right out. I'm going to take out now this filter housing. And then we're going to remove the impeller by turning the screw righty let loosey. So instead of righty tighty, in this case it's reverse threaded, so turning it right or clockwise will loosen it. So we get that out, take off this little piece, come straight up, and we take off this housing and there's a little chopper blade. We're going to lift that straight up, take that out, and we're going to remove this little Phillips head screw. This is just a, a little metal guard so that the chopper doesn't damage the heating element. Get that out of there. And then there's a little Phillips head screw we have to remove to help to get out the heating element. There's that one little Phillips head screw. We get that out. And now we're using a turkey baster to get all the water out of the sump area. And once you get all the water out, you can remove any little screws that might be holding the dishwasher to the cabinet. This one actually didn't have any screws. It was just held in by friction. So you can just, in this case, I, I was able to just wiggle it out. <clears throat> so I'm going to make sure that I've got the drain tube disconnected from the garbage disposal. And I've got the water turned off. On some units, you may have to remove the drain line. I'm sorry, the um, fill line. This one had a long enough one, so I could just get it out here. I'm going to put a towel down because I'm going to lay this dishwasher on its side so I can get to some of the bottom components. And there's always a little water that's going to come out, so it's good to put a towel down. I'm taking pictures of how all of the wires go onto all of the components on the bottom of the sump because I'm going to be removing all these pieces and putting them on a new sump. The little seal that leaks under the circulation pump is not one that you can easily replace so LG wants you to actually replace the whole plastic sump itself that comes with the new seal. So we're just pulling all the connectors off now. These are the ones off the heater and there's two spade connectors and then there's one modular connector for the temperature sensor. Pulling the spade connectors off of the drain pump And you got all the ones off the heater. And I'm using my pliers to take the hose clamp off of the drain hose that connects to the drain motor. 
I'm going to press down and wiggle that off. So we're going to end up removing this whole sump, so we have to dis get everything disconnected first. So we got that one off. Taking the little controller off of the variable motor. And also I'm taking off its its slow its uh, position switch connector. I'm taking off another hose clamp to get another hose off. There's a third hose at the bottom I gotta take off. This is the power connector for the motor. It brings power to the motor. So I'm gonna wiggle that off. This is the turbidity sensor that can help the dishwasher tell if the dishes are clean or not. And this is a little modular connector, I pulled that off. So I'm just checking my work here. I'm looking good, but I have one little hose here at the bottom I gotta take off. So I use my pliers, press in on the hose clamp, put that off. And then there's two connectors that are holding the sump onto the frame and they're just two Phillips head guys, this one and this one. So I'm gonna use a small little ratchet and a Phillips head screwdriver <clears throat> to get those off. Just making sure everything else is disconnected. So I'm also gonna remove some of the components. Here's the motor, it has just four screws holding it on. And the little seal above it tends to leak, and then water leaks down onto the motor, and it starts to rust the bearing, and then the bearing starts to squeal, and it just sounds awful. So it'd be a good time where, you, at this point, after replacing this sump and seal, you might want to replace the motor. What I did with this one is I sprayed in some lubricant. Here's the little seal. Get a better look at it and they just leak after about maybe six or seven years. People are pretty unhappy about this aspect of the dishwasher, but if you replace the seal, you might get another five or six years out of it. So I'm putting my screw gun onto the shaft and then spinning it to see if I can <coughs> break some of the corrosion. And I've got some white lithium in a spray can, and I'm going to spray that into the bearing to lubricate it to break up the corrosion. In this case, by doing this, it actually um, allowed me to fix the problem. I got rid of the bad squeal, and I did not have to replace the motor. I guess it would depend on how badly rusted this bearing might be. So if it's been making the squealing sound for some time, it may be smartest just to get another motor because they're, they're not that expensive. So I'm putting the white lithium grease on and then I'm spinning the shaft using my drill, kind of work that stuff in. And I would, I would put this stuff in on the top bearing and the bottom bearing. Taking the plate off of the bottom of the motor to expose the lower bearing. I'm going to spray the grease in on that and then spin it around. So here's the new sump. I'm going to put the motor onto the new sump. This plastic new sump comes with just one new seal, it's the circulation motor seal. The other seals you have to take off of the old sump and put them on this one. You gotta make sure you remember to get the seals off the old one. I'm putting the screws that hold the motor in position. It's going into that fresh new circulation motor seal so it won't leak anymore. It's kind of a lengthy procedure but it will get your dishwasher working. May, it may get you five or six more years of operation. So I just want to check, check it out here. I'm going to tighten this one screw because it just needs a little bit more. There we go. So I'm going to put the uh, motor 
uh, the drill back on the shaft and just spin it a little bit more. Now that I got all the grease on there, I got the seal in position. And yeah, it sounds good, it's not squealing. And then later testing with the same machine, this did solve the problem. It didn't make any more noise. So I'm removing the variable motor off of the old sump. Two Phillips head screws hold it on. And then you can just pull this towards you. You do need to take the seal off of the old sump and put it on the new sump. This one has a seal that's accessible from the top. Make sure you remember to do that. Very important, otherwise it'll leak. Taking off the position switch off of the old sump, I'm gonna put it on the new sump. I'm just gonna push it down and it'll lock into position. There we go. So now we'll put the motor on and we're just going to hold it in with, there's two Phillips head screws. Remember though, it's important that you do take the seal for this motor off of the old sump. It is accessible from the, from the, um, inside the dishwasher. You can pull it off and just push it on, um, before you finish the whole reassembly. This will be done once you have this new sump in position, you can just do it in from the top. You don't have to do it, you don't, do not have to access that seal from underneath. But if we forget that step, you will have a leak. So we're taking the turbidity sensor off by prying with a small standard head screwdriver. Be careful, don't break these tabs. Just pry off a little bit and you can pull the turbidity sensor off. Just pull it straight out. There's also a seal on that one too. So we're using the Phillips head screwdriver now to remove the last two components that are holding the sump against the frame. Take out that little screw and then pull it towards you. And then there's another one down here at the eight o'clock position. So just take a couple of spins here. We can get this one off and then we'll be able to remove the sump from the dishwasher. We will have to put the machine back on its feet so that we can pull the sump out from the um, from inside the dishwasher. We can't really get it out from here at the bottom. So we're just trying to unloosen it at the bottom first so we can push it up into the cavity and then we can get the machine on its feet and we can get the old sump out of there. So there's the last thing holding it on. We're going to push it in to the cavity and then we'll just put the dishwasher back on its feet. Now we have the old sump. We're going to remove the drain from the old sump. You can't do that from underneath the dishwasher. You have to remove the old sump first. You can take off the heater element and also the drain pump. So we just have three Phillips head screws we have to remove and then there's this O-ring. Make sure you put the O-ring in position, otherwise the drain motor will leak. So we're gonna, got our O-ring there, we're gonna put it in, put those three screws to hold it. And make sure you get these pretty tight. You don't wanna strip them, but get them, get them snug for sure. Drain looks good. We're using some pliers now to remove this little nut. 
that's holding on the heater assembly. You can use a ratchet would be even 